I'm pretty sure you've heard of a man in the Bible called Noah. The Bible calls him a herald of good news, meaning a preacher of good news. And when it comes to righteous men, scripture says that Noah was the most righteous man at his time. As a matter of fact, that's why God chose him and gave him the dimensions to build the ark to save himself, to save his wife, his three sons, and his three daughter-in-laws, a total of eight people. So God chose Noah because he was righteous. God gave him the dimensions to build the ark. Noah was a man that worked very diligently. He was faithful. He was loyal. He took more than a hundred years to build the ark. He was faithful to the call of God. But did you know that one day after Noah built the ark, he went through a moment of humiliation? Pay attention. Because this man, who scripture calls a herald, meaning a preacher of good news, God's salvation, speaking about God's salvation. God was building the ark to save, but people rejected the ark. The same way today people are rejecting Jesus. This man was chosen. He was called. But his own son, someone very close to him, kind of like Judas, close to Jesus. You know something about enemies? Enemies always tend to stay real close to the person they hate. Have you ever noticed that? They tend to stay really close to the people they hate. Look what scripture says here. Genesis chapter 9, verse 18 through 25. The sons of Noah who went forth from the ark were Shem, Ham, and Japheth. This is after the flood. This is after Noah finished building the ark. It's talking about after. And look what scripture says. Ham was the father of Canaan. These three were the sons of Noah. And from these, the people of the whole earth were dispersed, meaning the earth was populated again from them. Noah began to be a man of the soil. He didn't need to build the ark no more. So now he became a farmer. Look what scripture continues to say. And he planted a vineyard, grapes. <laughs> Look what the Bible continues to say. He drank of the wine and became drunk and lay uncovered in his tent. He didn't need to build the ark anymore. He started planting. He got super drunk, whether on purpose or by accident. <laughs> I don't know. But the thing is, he got super drunk and he laid uncovered, meaning naked, in his tent. Can you imagine a man who was righteous, a herald of good news, faithful, loyal, dedicated, loving. But he became a man of the ground and he got so drunk that he fell asleep naked in his tent. Imagine how drunk he had to be. He had his fault flaws. He had his faults. He had his failures. But did God reject him because of this? No. But remember, for some reason, an enemy always wants to be real close to the person they hate. I want to tell you that the devil is your enemy. And he wants to condemn you. And he wants to guilt you. And he wants to remind you of all your faults and all your errors. But God, through his son Jesus Christ, has cleansed you and washed you. Now pay attention to this. Pay attention. Look what happens here. His youngest son Ham sees him and look what happens. And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brothers outside. He walks in his dad's tent. He sees his dad naked. The mighty Noah, the mighty man of God. The mighty herald, the preacher of good news. The man who was always telling me, come on, Ham. Come on, Ham. You got to get on the ark, Ham. Don't get distracted, Ham. Come on, Ham. You got to be more diligent. For a hundred years, a hundred years, my dad was always on my case. My dad was always behind me, telling me what to do. For a hundred years, he was always telling me, come on, Ham. God's going to flood the earth. Come on, Ham. You got to be dedicated. Come on, Ham. You got to be faithful. Come on, Ham. Come on, Ham. For 100 years, my father was always telling me what to do. He was always telling me to keep my eye on the prize. He was always telling me to stay focused and dedicated on God and then look at him look at the mighty man of God look at the mighty preacher of good news naked drunk in his tent Puh. you have to be real careful that when you see the failures of people you don't rejoice I'm talking to you you have to be real careful that when you see the failures or the humanness the sinful nature of people you don't rejoice now listen, scripture says, if someone sins, rebuke them, exhort them, and never says rejoice. 
and never says mock them. And never says spread it around like gossip. Never says that. You know one thing that amazes me? When you read the Gospels, you see where Jesus can read the minds of people. He knows exactly what they're thinking. And he was hanging around his 12 disciples for three years. And his 12 disciples, let me tell you something. His 12 disciples were just like you. You know all those battles you go through? All those struggles you go through? All those thoughts you go through? All those temptations? All those thoughts that you're like, oh man, I don't want to think that? The disciples were just like you. They went through the same stuff you go through. And it amazes me that in the Gospels, Jesus, knowing and being able to read the thoughts of people, never looked at his disciples and said, Ugh, man, why are you thinking that? Ugh, man, how can you be thinking that? Never, not once. The only time he told them anything was when they were doubting. And that's it. And he exhorted them to have faith. But he never, not one time, threw their thoughts in their face. Ugh, how can you be thinking that? Or, man, how can that be going through your mind? Never. Never. You know why? Because Jesus didn't come to condemn the world. He came to save the world. The Bible says Jesus already knew what was inside of man. He knows everything that's inside of you. And that's good news. Why? Because even though he knows everything that's inside of you, he still came to save you and to wash you and to cleanse you. So look what happens. Ham goes outside and tells his brother, Shh, look at the mighty Noah. Look at that guy. Look at that guy that was always on our case for 100 years. Build the ark, build the ark, build the ark. Come on, guys. You got to be dedicated. Now look at that hypocrite. Ham represents a lot of Christians nowadays. Represents a lot of believers nowadays. That when they see somebody that used to teach them or exhort them or rebuke them, when they see somebody in an error, when they see somebody in a fault, they rejoice. And they got to tell somebody, man, that's horrible. That's trash right there, straight up. That's trash. That is horrible and that is trash because that's not the example Jesus Christ came to show to us. That's horrible. Then Shem and Japheth, these are the other two brothers, when their brother Ham told them, man, look at Noah, he's drunk. Look at our dad, he's drunk. Look at him, look at him, look at him. His vulnerabilities, his failures, his errors, his faults. Look what happens. The other two brothers, look what they did. Honorable men, men of character. Then Shem and Japheth took a garment, laid it on both their shoulders, and walked backwards and covered the nakedness of their father. Their faces were turned backward, and they did not see their father's nakedness. You know what the other two brothers did? They both got a blanket. The other one was on this side. And they both held a blanket, put it over their shoulders. And their dad was behind them. They never looked at their dad. They looked at the opposite way. And they covered their father with a blanket. And they covered him. And they put the blanket over their father. They never saw his nakedness. You and I should never rejoice with the errors, with the faults. With the sins of others. Or oh, man, can you see that? Man, I can't believe that. Man, oh man. And they've been preaching that long? Man, and, they, and they're preachers? Man, and they've been saved longer than me? Man, I can't believe that. You see, I knew it. I knew it all along. Come on, man. Pay attention. That is not the will of God. Ham told everybody. Shem and Japheth, they covered their father's nakedness. You know where they learned that from? They learned that from God. Because all of them had errors, but God still chose Noah to build the ark. He chose them. They understood mercy. They understood grace. By no means were they enabling that. And by no means, am I saying enable people? By no means. Rebuke. Exhort. Rebuke them and exhort them pff, however many times you have to. But rejoice and mock and gossip and rumor. That's not the will of God. Look what happens here. When Noah awoke from his wine and knew what his youngest son had done to him, he said, Cursed be Canaan. A servant of servants shall he be to his brothers. What happened? What happened to Ham? And what happens to anyone who mocks at somebody's failure, at somebody's sin? What's going to happen? They're bringing a curse to themselves. Scripture says in the New Testament, Don't judge or else you'll be judged. Scripture says, with the rod you measure, you shall be measured. Did Jesus mock you of your sin? Did Jesus tell everyone your sins? No. He washed you and he cleansed you. What did he tell to the people who wanted to stone the woman called adultery? Go ahead, stone her. 
but only he who is without sin cast the first stone. Everybody walked away. You know what Jesus was saying? She does deserve to be stoned. Let there a perfect person stone her then. Let there be a perfect person to stone her. Let the first perfect person throw the first stone. Nobody. But the only perfect person that could throw the stone raised her up and said, Woman, where are your accusers? You know who is the accuser? The devil. Satan. You know who is the justifier? Jesus. Don't be like the devil. Don't be like the accuser, the adversary. Walk in the love of God. If you see something in your brother or your sister, spiritually speaking, a brother or sister in the Lord, exhort them. Rebuke them. Tell them the seriousness of it. But don't ever mock. And don't ever spread gossip. That's not the will of God. Look what scripture says here in Proverbs chapter 17, verse 9. Whoever covers an offense seeks love, but he who repeats a matter separates close friends. In other words, if somebody offends you and you look it over and you forgive them, you're seeking peace. But scripture says, but when somebody's repeating a matter, they're just trying to bring separation. Keep that in your mind. Someone who's just repeating, 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 not ever coming to the root of it, not exhorting, not rebuking. If you really love somebody, you exhort them, you rebuke them. But somebody who's just repeating, 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 they want to bring separation. And the only one who wants to bring separation is the devil. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 7 through 8, look what he says. This is the New Testament. The end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be self-controlled, sober-minded for the sake of your prayers. Above all, keep loving one another earnestly. Since love covers a multitude of sins. You know what's going to keep you walking forward in the Christian life? Through offenses, through battles, through struggles. When you walk in the love of God. Do you know how many times I've been offended? Do you know how many times people have offended me? I will not be able to be here preaching the gospel. Or at the church where I preach. I will not be able to continue to preach. Just period. In general. I would not be able to preach if I would let all those offenses enter my heart. So for the sake of my own peace, and because I know that God has forgiven me, I'm going to forgive them. I'm going to look it over. Why? Because I want unity in the things of God. I want to be unified in the grace and peace and mercy of the Lord. Listen. Listen. If you love a brother or sister, exhort them, rebuke them. You know what Ham should have done? Ham should have done what his brothers did. When he saw his dad, he should have gone in there with a blanket and covered him. And then when his dad woke up, he could have exhorted him the way Paul tells Timothy. When you see an older man, when you exhort him, don't exhort him like somebody your age. Exhort him like a father. He should have said, Dad, Dad, you got to be careful, Dad. You can't be doing that. You're a man of God. You can't be doing that, Dad. Look at everything that God has used you to do. Don't let the devil enter your life like that. Don't get distracted now. Because he was after love. But because he wasn't after love, he went to go tell his brothers, trying to grab a gang, a group of people, to mock Noah. That's, the, that's, the, that's what the devil wants to do. That's how the devil operates. But I want to tell you, remember what Jesus Christ has done in your life. And everything he's forgiven you for and washed you for. And if you see somebody like that, exhort them. Rebuke them. And if they don't listen, pray for them. Pray for the mercy and grace of God over their lives. God bless you. I hope this video was a blessing for your life. If it was, do me a favor. If you're not subscribed, subscribe. I post weekly videos that I hope and pray will be a great blessing to your life. And also, if you want to show your appreciation for this channel or for this page, you can do so by a feature at the bottom of your screen called Super Thanks. Those are always a great blessing to my life. Those are always greatly appreciated. Another way that you can show your appreciation, but on a monthly basis, is called channel memberships. The link is in my description. Channel members get access to archive videos, special badges, special stickers that are available for all channel members. If that's something you're interested in, click the link in my description. And before you click off, make sure you watch one of these videos. I hope that they will continue to be a great blessing to your life. And remember, the same way that Noah's other two sons covered him, that's the same way Jesus Christ has covered all your sins by his death and his resurrection on the cross. God bless you.